Okay, so in this video, we're going to review macromolecules, uh, all four of them. So when we think about uh, our macro large molecules that make up life on Earth, they're made from five main elements, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. But not all the macromolecules have all five. So carbohydrates are made out of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Our lipids are made out of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Our proteins are made of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. And then it's our nucleic acids that are made of all five, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. So these are our four major macromolecules or organic molecules that make up life on Earth. So when we look at a summary of how they are formed, we have two major words. We have monomer and we have polymer. Monomer means single building block and polymer is a chain of those. Your polymer is gonna be your larger molecule. So carbohydrates, the main basic building block of carbohydrates are called monosaccharides. And the example of a monosaccharide is glucose. Then you can see in the polymer, we have a chain of glucose monomers. We have a chain of monosaccharides, and we call this a polysaccharide. Then we have protein. Protein's monomer is made out of amino acids. Now a chain of amino acids is called a polypeptide, and that is the polymer of proteins. And then we have our DNA and our RNA, our nucleic acids, and their monomer is called a nucleotide. And a chain of nucleotides, this single strand right here would be RNA, but if there was a double strand, it would be called DNA. Now, lipids are the macromolecule that are different from the rest. Lipids are not made in that monomer-polymer fashion. Instead, we have three different structures that we can find lipids. We have fatty um, triglycerides that are made out of fatty acids and glycerol. We have phospholipids that make up our cell membranes. And then we have our steroid hormones like estrogen and testosterone that are also lipid based. So let's go ahead and review each of these really quickly. I have individual videos on each of these topics if you want more details. But when we look at the macromolecules in life and like how they're built from material, like matter on earth, like this is one of the big points about matter being recycled. So plants, they have carbon dioxide and water that they're gonna use during photosynthesis. So they have CO2 and H2O. And what they're gonna do during photosynthesis is rearrange those atoms into a molecule of glucose. So here we have that monosaccharide, a one single sugar. And if you look at this picture, you can see the carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, the C, H, and O that make up carbohydrates. So from this point on in my PowerPoint, I will show you glucose like this. This is the one single sugar. It is a monosaccharide. But then I mentioned nitrogen and phosphorus earlier, right? So the nitrogen and phosphorus actually come up from as nutrients in the soil. So when we look at monosaccharides, mono means one and saccharide, I'm sorry, that S, should have been there. Saccharide means sugar. So monosaccharides, glucose is our major monosaccharide, but there's also fructose and galactose, and they're all made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen from the carbon dioxide and water the plants use during photosynthesis. So um, during photosynthesis in the chloroplast, the plant will build um, and make these monosaccharides called glucose. Uh, and eventually they're gonna use them though. They don't just make them for us. So the plant has, uh, so it does photosynthesis and makes some monosaccharides. Now the plant can store these, these monosaccharides, these glucose molecules in a long chain. So if one single sugar is called a monosaccharide, then when the plants connect these glucose monosaccharides into a long chain, chain, it's called a polysaccharide. So um, the monomer to review is called a monosaccharide, one single sugar. Our example is glucose. And then the polymer is a chain of glucose monosaccharides. 
and it's called a polysaccharide. Now examples in life, we have starch, glycogen, cellulose, and chitin. So let's go ahead and see what plants use these polysaccharides for. So there's starch and there's cellulose in plants. Starch is how plants store their energy. So when you eat a potato, you get a lot of energy because you're eating that starch. Then cellulose is what plants use to build their cell walls. Now both starch and cellulose, guys, they look like this. It is a long chain of glucose monomers hooked together. So starch and cellulose are both long chains of glucose monomers. So during photosynthesis, as the plant builds um, monosaccharides or glucose, it can save some of that as starch and that's like it's saving on to energy. And then it's gonna use also the glucose though to build its cell wall. So when you look at a leaf, um, those plant cells are made of cellulose, like this, not the whole cell, but the cell wall. <laughs> okay, um, so here these rigid cell walls in a plant are made from polysaccharide called cellulose. Okay, so now let's look at a human. When we eat our food, we have sugar flowing in our blood. That's called our blood sugar. We actually have glucose traveling along with our blood cells. And we try to keep our blood sugar balanced in homeostasis. We try to keep always having like an access to glucose. So when you eat a meal, sometimes your blood sugar will rise if your meal is high in carbohydrates. So now we're out of homeostasis and our body's like too much sugar. So this is where like our hormones, most people have heard of insulin at this time of this age in life. So um, what's gonna happen is the insulin's gonna travel to your liver and your muscles and it's going to tell your liver and your muscles, man, let's go ahead and save some of this sugar. We have way too much in our bloodstream. So what's gonna happen is the glucose will actually leave our blood and in our liver and our muscles, we will form a polysaccharide. Look, it's a chain of glucose monomers. So this polysaccharide, no, we're not quite in homeostasis yet, uh, but this right here is called glycogen. Glycogen is the polysaccharide in animals. That's how we store uh, like a short-term amount of energy. We can store about 24 hours worth of energy as glycogen in our liver. Okay, but yet here we might still have too many sugars in our blood. And that's where we have our fat cells. So we will actually take the extra glucose and because lipids are also made of C, H, and O, we can actually save that, that energy for later in our fat cells until we're back into homeostasis. Now, when we look at why we save our energy though, why we save our glucose, let's say I go for a run after school. I'm gonna use these uh, blood sugars to power my body in exercise. And now look, my blood is missing glucose. So now we have an opposite hormone of insulin and that's gonna tell our liver, hey, go ahead and put some sugar back into our blood so we can keep on exercising. So that polysaccharide glycogen that we saw right here in our liver is how we can like keep our blood sugar nice and balanced in homeostasis so we always have access to energy. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to protein. So the monomer and polymer of proteins, uh, the monomer is an amino acid and the polymer is a chain of amino acids called a polypeptide. So the monomer is amino acid and the polymer is a polypeptide. And the proteins, they fold up in a series of steps, but eventually the ultimate protein structure is really dependent on how many amino acids were in the chain and which amino acids. So like the order or the sequence of amino acids and how many. And that will determine how it folds up into its overall shape. But when we look at the amino acid structure, what we see is we see a, um, a nitrogen now. We see the carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. 
So proteins are made of C, H, O, and N. Now you might be wondering about this R chain. That R just means that we have 20 different amino acids in our bodies and, and in life. And you can see this blue area, this like brown area, the purple and the green, that's the R. So right here, this R is what's different on each amino acid, but they're all made of C, H, O, and N, nitrogen. And then it folds up into its overall shape. So proteins are what make up our muscles, um, our pigments in life. They make enzymes. Enzymes are proteins. Um, our antibodies in our immune system. We have proteins in our cell membranes. Okay. And then uh, another type of macromolecules, lipids. And lipids, we have our fat, um, like energy storage molecule called a triglyceride, which is a lipid. Uh, we have our cell membranes. Oops, these are a little out of order, sorry. These cell membranes are made out of phospholipids. And then we have our hormones, which are sterols. We're really gonna focus on triglycerides in this unit. And then in our next unit, we'll talk more about cell membranes and uh, hormones. Okay, so when we look at a triglyceride, you can see the C, H, and O. This is how we store long-term energy. These fatty acids, so here we have a glycerol that's highlighted in red. And then these um, carbon-hydrogen chains are called fatty acids. So we have two kinds of fatty acids. We have our saturated fatty acids that are straight chains and will be solid at room temperature. And then we have our unsaturated fatty acids. They have a double bond that causes them to bend or to have a little kink there. And so uh, if you have a whole bunch of fat, unsaturated fatty acids together, that'll be like your oils that are liquid at room temperature. So uh, lipids are generally nonpolar, which means that they repel water. So that's why if you drop oil into water, they don't mix. So any waxes or greases or fats, um, those are all lipids and they repel water. And two major functions in the body would be long-term energy storage that you can carry with you in the form of fat and our cell membranes. Okay, and then our last really quick um, large macromolecule is DNA and RNA. We call these nucleic acids. That's what the NA stands for. So the major little building block, the monomer of a nucleic acid is called a nucleotide. Now there are different, so it has a phosphate, a sugar, and um, a base. So it has three parts that we'll study more when we get into our DNA unit. But there are four different kinds of nucleotides, A, T, C, and G. Um, now this is where though you can see in that phosphate group, there is a phosphate. So now where carbs and lipids are CHO and then proteins are CHON, now DNA and RNA are CHONP. This phosphorus is used in the phosphate group of a nucleotide. So when we look at the polymer, it's a chain of these nucleotides. Now, if you have a single strand, this could be RNA if this T was a U, um, but a single strand of nucleotides um, could be RNA if the T was a U. Um, but if you have a double strand, this would be our DNA. But you can see how it's made of repeating monomers called nucleotides. All right, so that is my general overview of macromolecules. If you want more details on any of these topics, check out my playlist on macromolecules.